Okay, so last week we did this t-shirt hack and I had this nice little button placket here, which I'm still loving. And I also, I didn't mention it, but I also did extended cuffs with thumb holes because the whole point of this wool jersey shirt is warmth and comfort and snuggling down in. So obviously this was a must. And I thought today I would show you how I did that rather than, you know, trying to cram too much into one video. All right, here's my sleeve piece for the shirt that I'm sewing. Now, I'm sewing a shirt from scratch, so it's being, it's able to lay flat, but um, that's just so I can look at what the length of my cuff is going to be. If your shirt is already made and it's already sewn up on the side, that's totally fine. As long as you get that measurement, you can absolutely do this exact same thing on a cuff that's already, like a shirt that's already sewn. What I really need to do is I need to make sure whatever length that is, that the length that goes around my hand is gonna be smaller than the length um, of the cuff of my shirt. All right, so I have eight inches around my hand. Now I need to measure the length of the cuff. So we're looking at about four and a half inches. Plus I also need to measure down um, where I want my thumb hole to start the opening and how long do I want that opening to be? Cause I don't want anything that's going to be tight around my thumb, right? All right, so I have like a corner shape sort of started at the top of my page here. And that's because I know I'm gonna wind up with either a square or a rectangle. So I'm gonna count eight inches over because that was uh, the width around my hand. But I'm gonna need a seam allowance on either side of that. So my final mark's actually gonna be at nine inches. So the depth of my cup was measured at four and a half inches. But this is gonna be a folded piece. So I actually need to measure down to nine inches, which would be four and a half plus four and a half. But then I need to add that extra inch for seam allowance on both sides. So my total piece is nine inches wide by 10 inches long. I'm just gonna mark a dashed line down the center to remind me that that is where the fold line on this is. All right, so next thing I need to figure out exactly where to position that thumb hole. So I need to know sort of how big I need the thumb hole to be, and I also need to know how much uh, length I need from the end of my cuff to the top of my thumb hole. So it's looking about an inch of space between my thumb hole and um, the part of my cuff that is going to rest right on top of my knuckles. And it's that center line that I've marked on the pattern that's going to rest on top of my knuckles. So I'm going to measure one inch down from that center line in either direction, because remember this is folded. And then I'm going to give myself two inches beyond that on either side for my thumb hole. And then the rest will just get sewn up. Now I'm just going to put notches um, to mark where my thumb holes are going to be. And actually, I really only needed to put notches on one side, but I guess <laughs> I wasn't thinking of that. All right, so here I have my pattern piece. An additional thing that I am going to mark on this pattern piece is across the eight and a half um, inch width. I want to remind myself that this is where my dogs are, my direction of greatest stretch. I want it to be able to go from side to side so that this stretches around my hand. So here I have cut out my notches. Now you can absolutely, if you wanted to do a half pattern piece that was meant to be cut on the fold, you absolutely could. You could have your pattern piece just look like this. Um, then you can just mark a line next to your inside edge to remind yourself that that edge goes on the fold. And then of course, mark your dogs on the top. So if you wanted your pattern piece to look like that, you wanna cut on the fold, go to it if that's what makes you happy. 
because I'm cutting this out of like small leftover pieces, um, I just like to have the full piece so I can kind of place it wherever I, I can. That's just what makes it easier for me. All right, so I've cut up my piece of fabric and I'm just marking my notches. Again, I'm only marking them on one side. I didn't really have to cut notches on the other side. Let's just pretend that I was being thorough and whatever, I didn't really need to. And I'm going to fold that in half. So right now I have the wrong side out. I'm just gonna put a pin everywhere that I have a notch because that actually just kind of makes things a little bit easier, it like reinforces it in my mind when I'm sewing because I actually have to stop and only sew certain sections. So the bigger section is where my thumb hole is going to be. So I'm not going to sew the seam there right now, okay? So I'm going to sew all of the smaller sections and leave the bigger sections open. So that is sewn. I'm sorry about the black fabric. It's literally the only color this wool came in. Okay, so I've sewn the three small sections. Now I'm going to fold over that top seam allowance. And I'm just gonna hold that down with pins and I'm putting the pins again where um, my seams where my notches would have been, which even though I didn't mark the notches on the other side, I can still see where my seams go to and where they're, where things are open for the thumb holes. So I put my pins in the exact same spots. Okay, so that's completely folded. Now I'm going to fold that in half and I'm just gonna make sure everything is well tucked and I'm gonna reposition my pins so that the remaining seam allowance that I did not fold can be pinned together. And when I go back and I'm, I'm just gonna sew where that thumb hole is, and I'm going to do a bit of a shallower seam allowance because I don't wanna accidentally catch what I've sewn before. So this time I'm just going to leave the top and bottom open and I'm gonna sew where the thumb hole is. And believe it or not, this is still wrong side of the fabric facing out. So here I've gotten the seam where the thumb piece is and I'm just gonna fold that piece the other way out. So now I have access to the other side of the seam allowance. Same thing, I'm going to position some pins here right where the notches are so that it's easier for you to see where things are. And now just like I just did on the other side, I'm going to go and sew a shallower, like by an eighth of an inch, a shallower seam allowance right where the thumb hole is. Okay, so all the crazy seam work is done. I'm just gonna take one layer of that and roll it out. It's kind of like rolling up a ball of socks, okay? Now we have the right side facing out. And I'm just going to make sure that all of my raw edges um, come down to the same height so that I know this piece is folded right in half. And there we go. Ta-da! It's kind of like a weird puzzle, but it works. <laughs> and there are no raw edges. I don't have to do any um, folding and pinning and top stitching or anything to get things kind of tucked in. It just works. All right, now I have to actually put it on my shirt. So I have my shirt with the front facing up and this does become important. <laughs> so front facing up and my seam is on the left hand side. So this is my right arm. If I were doing my left arm, okay, the seam would be on the right hand side with the thumb hole at the top. Basically this, the seam is gonna run down um, the bottom side of my arm. And so I kind of need the thumb hole to be a quarter turn over from that. You know what, if you really wanna make this simple, just try your shirt on and put a pin where your thumb is. <laughs> That'll make it a lot easier for you. Once you've figured out where that thumb hole needs to be, um, go ahead and slide your cuff over your sleeve and just pop a couple of pins in there. Ideally, your new cuff should be a little bit smaller than the opening on your shirt. So I put in one pin um, and then I just kind of stretch it out so that I'm making sure to sort of evenly position this cuff on my shirt. Then I'm gonna go and stitch all the way around. Okay, so we're almost there, yay. Now I do need to go back and I'm gonna put a bar tack right on the top and bottom of my thumb hole just to give a little bit of extra strength there. 
The other thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna take all that seam allowance from where the cuff is attached and I'm going to fold that to the shirt side, like up the arm. And then I'm going to top stitch that with a double needle. And here we go. Oh my gosh, they're so fun. <laughs> um, they're so super soft and cuddly. And yeah, I'm I'm somebody who's never gotten to really wear these because um, shirts just never have arms that are long enough for me unless I make them myself. So I'm pretty pleased with these. Well, there we go. Uh, easy thumb cuffs. They are a bit of a puzzle when you like think about the turns and the stitches and where to put things but they work out so fantastically and I am absolutely loving them. I haven't knit with them on yet, but that's like what I'm really curious about is if I can knit with them because that's when I get cold in the winter because I sit still for hours. It's the only time I sit still is when I'm knitting. So yeah, we'll see, we'll see if that works. So I hope you'll give this a try. It was a super easy add to any long sleeve shirt. I hope you'll give it a try. That's all I've got for you this week. If you haven't already, subscribe down below and I'll see you next time. Speaking of high wool content, I did just get a parcel from Minerva Crafts, but I'm not gonna tell you what's in it yet. Aren't I a stinker?